Good afternoon, everybody. On behalf of the President of the Executive Committee of Members of Finance, I'd like to welcome all our colleagues from the Institute of Chartered Shipbrokers, Controlling Council, Executive Council, Education and Training Committee, etc., etc., to the 2016 uh, Finance Program meeting. This is the first time we've, we've tried a, a presentation like this. Hopefully it will, will be a major success and it will be something that we'll, we'll think about again in the future. Is the ship broker a dodo heading for extinction? An interesting question and one which concerns a lot of our members. This is a panel discussion and I'll just give a very brief, basically names and numbers, introduction to the speakers and um, I'm sure they can say a little bit more as we go along. Working uh, from my right, Vasily Kotilevsky. Is that right? Thank you. Um, he is founder and CEO of Open Sea Pro. Uh, then uh, on his right, Colin Nolan, who is a director of the Baltic Exchange and ship owner. Um, in the middle, Fulvio Carlini, FICS, chairman of FNASBA's uh, Charter and Documentary Committee and a member of the Executive Committee. After that, somebody who uh, probably needs very little introduction to most people in London, Alan Marsh. Uh, formerly chairman and CEO of uh, Bromar Cisco, he now tells me he does something with ship owning, but I'm sure I can tell you about that later. And finally, Andrew Jameson, uh, legal advisor and claims director of ITIC, the, uh, the in, yeah, Transport Intermediaries Club. So that's enough from me. Fulvio, over to you. Thanks. <coughs> Thanks, Jonathan. Welcome. First of all, I'm very happy to have all, all of you with us this afternoon. Uh, Jonathan briefly introduced our discussion today. Are we a dodo? That's a nice question to ask. Uh, let's say there are many signs which are not uh, uh, good for us, but uh, we believe we are not a dodo. We, have a, we may have a future, we have a future. It greatly depends on us, so not on, not only on external factors. So this is why we wanted to have with us uh, she brokers, uh, a low consultant, as well as I wanted and I invited um, Vasily to be with us, uh, just because Vasily is doing exactly the opposite. Well, I may be exaggerated, but the opposite. Oh, that is to say, Vasily is the founder and the CEO of OpenSea, that is to say, uh, a system, how, I don't know, if I, I can't say an app, it's not an app, it's a website through which people can charter ships without us. So the question is, why? Why didn't you kill me? Why didn't you try to? <laughs> I thought, I thought, let me say, I thought that the best thing is to know your enemy, not to avoid him. It's best to know him, to talk with him, and then find a way. So that's why I, I wanted to have Vasily today with us. But before, before we ask Vasily to, I will have some questions for you as well. But first of all, I would really ask him, Alan Marsh just to, I would like to start with him, uh, ask him this question. What's your point of view? Well, when you've been in this game as long as I have been, you've gone through this exercise at least two or three times. Um, every few years, somebody bright and young who understands the IT world comes up with this great new system for his own benefit. Does it help the principals? Is it good for owners? Is it good for charters? What is their game? Um, I'm not going to make a, a big statement. The broker has always added value. The owner has always wanted the broker. Maybe the charterer doesn't want the broker, but the owner pays the commission. And when we've had these discussions in the past, and Colm and I remember, particularly in the 70s, the charterers were very keen that they could put all their cargoes up there, and they said, come on, Mr. Owner, you just give us your rate, and then we'll work it. The owner said no. The brokers give us the information. This is critical for us. We want to know the truth. We want to know what is happening. We want this information. So, owners need brokers. It's not their by word, it's their words. 
And I think as long as we as a broker are prepared to give a full service, they will, in my opinion, continue. There will, of course, be deals done eventually, uh, as there are today done between charters and owners without brokers. But I do believe our life is still for very many years to go. Which is a good start for my years. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, going ahead, um, I am going to ask the same question to you and then to Brazil. Um, I think it was, it was 1974 when I got into uh, shipbroking as a, as a trainee shipbroker. Uh, my chairman at the time, he, he came along and passed me on the back and said, are you, are you sure you want to go down this line that shipbroking never be the same again? Because we installed the first fax machine. <laughs> this was followed by mobile phones, that was it. At the end of the world, everybody could phone everybody direct. Um, followed by the internet. And the internet was a real, real big uh, challenge. I'm glad to see you, you named your company OpenSea. Um, there was another company, very similar, Level Seeds. Um, they lost $30 million trying to do the same thing. Um, because nobody would use them. <laughs> very simple. Um, as Alan says, the as an owner, and I've worked for owners most of my life, we need brokers. We need to be able to tell a charter where to go and still remain friends. We need a broker to tell us when we're wrong. But if you take away the brokers, think what might happen. There'd be no indexes, or indexes would not have the same gravitas or strength. The business would fail. The brokers are extremely extremely important. So as Alan says, and one of the biggest thing, the owner pays the bill. It is a, a bill that an owner is willing to pay. I've gone to an owner with times when we fix ships at seven and a half percent commission. He's happy to pay it because he's getting a good deal. So long live the broker. <laughs> <laughs> now, Vasily, can you just explain to us how the idea started? How, why, how, why, or how the idea started, and how you have been developing it. Also because, <clears throat> I give you uh, one, one thing. A couple of months ago, I met with two, not students, they are already, they already graduated at the university. Two engineers, one from Finland and the other one is in, from Turin, uh, in Italy. And uh, they are working on even an app to do something similar to what you're doing. And they, they came to me, and I don't know how they found me, but they came to me, and one of the things on which they were insisting, so I'm giving you, uh, uh, why an app or something like that to create a marketplace can be a good idea, they were insisting on the fact that our world, our the shipping, is a world where there is a lack of transparency, which uh, I, I don't understand. I believe there is a lot of transparency in our world, a lot. But this can be also another point we, we may talk about later. But if you want to tell us something about how you started or, and so on, this could be interesting. Thank you. Thank you. No. Take it closer, otherwise. We'll I will start from the end. I will uh, answer the question. No, I don't think so. I don't think that uh, ship brokers are heading to extinction. And we uh, don't need to make such app or such web application because I also worked as a ship broker seven years, and it was my dream job. That seven years was my dream job because previously I was working as a charter for a scrap trading uh, Russian company, which was the huge one, and uh, I was found uh, the role of the broker and decided that uh, okay, these guys are taking more money, so I would like to be, and finally I got such opportunity. Uh, 
since uh, I have started my career in brokering, many things have changed. Commodity and technology sectors leading me to believe, and I say it very humbly, of course, that within just three, five years, market will change. Uh, we even uh, made uh, online survey recently, not from our users, but uh, for everybody. And uh, I would like to uh, give you some uh, raw data, the answers from the other participants of the charter market. Main challenges for charter professionals today, which big masses of data and lack of accurate information, lack of loyalty and lack of respect, market imbalance, the process of consolidation of trading companies resulted in a lower number of charters and thus lesser business opportunities and clients to develop. The presence of high competition and the challenge of effectively synthesizing an immense amount of information, at the same time having to create value for clients. So I think that such kind of problems are they real? What do you think? like to answer. Yeah. Your point of view. Yeah. So my name is Maurice. I'm working as a ship broker. Uh, I'm French, obviously. Um, sorry I'm sorry to interrupt you. Yeah. I, I ask to have experienced, young, so we have different point of view. That's a reason. Sorry. Please. <laughs> a younger? Yeah. I'm good. He's the lawyer. <laughs> I was a substitute. It's even more important for the very good book. <laughs> yeah. Please. So I've worked on both sides. The, I've worked uh, on the ship owner side, and now I'm working on the ship broker, specialized on top of short ship broker based in London. And my, my opinion on what you said about it, uh, lack of information and, uh, and everything you say and whether our ship broker will survive. Actually, I would probably rephrase a bit the question and ask who are the ship brokers who will survive currently? Uh, because some will disappear, but I don't think brokers will disappear at all. But it's going to be a different uh, shape, a different uh, world, basically. So why I'm saying, importantly, I think the why brokers exist. I think there are four main reasons, in my opinion, as a young, young professional. First is asymmetry of information, not lack of information. Which means I think owners have more information probably sometimes than uh, charters. Market knowledge uh, for brokers, because brokers have a very wide and uh, good overview of the market. Uh, time, because sometimes owners or charters or even buyers and sellers for sale and purchase don't have time to be, deal with the transaction and prefer to focus on operations. And obviously the expertise, as you say, uh, you have worked. Uh, some ship workers have worked on the ship, on the owner side and so on. That's quite important. Now I would make a differentiation between open uh, open segments and more like specialized segments. <coughs> so for me, in open shipping segments such as book, uh, tankers or container ship, uh, information uh, and rates are publicly available. Uh, just to, to, be, to be straight to the point on that. So probably you have a lot of platforms uh, and technological solutions will really emerge basically to uh, try to create some automated system, automated process, and go and put direct transaction. Um, anyway, I think the challenge with this type of platforms, in my opinion, would be to change the habits of the industry. As we, as we mentioned before, uh, a lot of owners prefer to deal with brokers, and what I said before, for time, for experience, for market knowledge, and so on. Uh, so such platform will be easy to implement uh, because we need to get market recognition. It's, it's going to be very hard. Then, however, I think you have some specialized uh, segments um, where it's slightly more difficult to implement such platform, and I doubt it's going to be possible. Actually, uh, that's my opinion uh, because you have a real uh, expertise, and as well, rates are not cheap. Um, so I will give three examples. Um, sale and purchase. Um, in general, owners are very reluctant 
to, uh, to share their price, uh, to release their sell price uh, to the market. First of all, because they don't want to give uh, wrong signals to the market uh, for competition, for their clients, for their crew, uh, thinking that the assets will go away so they will be out of work or stuff. Or examples like this. Uh, new build, where you need a highly technical and a lot of experience to deal with the transaction, with the legal, and so on. So I'm, I'm not sure like uh, what technology could address these type of requirements. And what, I'm, what I know is offshore. Um, there are the, chart, the rates are not publicly available. Um, and needs to be updated on a daily basis. And not being available, the uh, owners will, I doubt, will be like in work where people will be manually uh, uh, manually uh, uh, updating the, the information because it depends on the work scope, the material you use, uh, the territories, and it's going to be a big challenge. And some specific requirements as well, like do you use a RV, do you, do you use a diving spread, uh, and some people don't know what materials they will use, and that's why they go to brokers. Um, so, in general, to, to conclude, I, I would say that specialized with a high expertise and experience brokers will probably survive, and uh, that's my opinion. And the uh, platforms will be very difficult to implement. But I, I follow you, but by, by what you say, you are talking specialized, you are talking SMB, so specific segments. Most of, well, most of us, most of our work is not done on specialized, on specific, but it's done on day-to-day, -day, on coastal, on, on regular trades. So, on that kind of trades, uh, <coughs> can, we see, can we see how your system is working, Brazil? Or better, you are, I believe you are mainly trying to work on regular trades, or you try to work on specific? Specific, I mean, more specialized. No, now we are open for all kinds of ships, charters, brokers, so on. But uh, we are focusing now on dry bulk, because dry bulk market is a problem. And uh, ship owners would like to fix their problem. And they are eager to find any opportunity which will bring them new cargo or highest price of car. So when you have to call 10 brokers, okay, but when you can place a position which is opening right now and get immediate feedback, okay, they will choose. Um, <coughs> I actually agree that modern methods should be encouraged. I can see, say, in the cake market. Uh, modern, modern methods uh, should be encouraged. Uh, the market is ever evolving. Um, and I can see where um, changes are for the good. Um, I, could, I could see it working in the cake market just for some extent, where you have you know, one or two places where you can loan, one place where you can discharge. Um, however, um, you say you want to fix the problems in the dry market. Mm -hmm. This will actually worsen the problems. Where you have a screen base, and, and we all know the, the charters who have tried to do so, um, the majors, um, the only people who benefit are them. They will only put on one cargo. It's only by talking to 20 brokers you find out what's going on. And there's nothing wrong with talking to 20 people it's actually quite enjoyable. It's part of the business. The business is people-led. Not looking at the screen and thinking, that's the one cargo. Yes, the facts were sold and always part of the business. Yeah, and it still is. It still is, yeah. But then, yeah, so... Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. No, 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 no. I, I wanted to ask one thing to Andrew. Uh, does IT, uh, ITIC so far, have you had any case where too much technology was, was used? And so did you have any specific problem where just because things were based on 
platform and so on and so on, or broadcast, have been employed any kind of specific platform and then you may have had, or broker may have had uh, uh, any kind of claim or error, or I don't know. I find it difficult to think of a case where technology and broker error. Um, I don't want to start something running terribly, but we've had an awful lot of technology hacked into. <laughs> and there's an awful lot of people who pay freight which they weren't meant to pay. But I think that's taking the debate somewhere where we don't necessarily want to. Um, someone said to me, well, just into my ear, well, he's the lawyer. And it's funny comparing being a lawyer with what's happened to my own client, Pace of Shipwrecks. Because all the lawyers went in two ways. They either went into big multinationals or they went into small niche players. Think about the big shipbroking companies now. How a lot of shipbroking has consolidated. And you can see that the ability for the investments that they are going to be able to do. They are going to be able to service clients and use technology in a very major way to service clients. Um, I'm not as young as the colleague he would have got, and my deep apologies <laughs> to the poor people from Fanasbury who now paid me three times. But um, I don't go back to 1974, but I remember speaking at um, the CMA in 2000 when the dot coms were going to wipe us all out. And of course they didn't. Um, I remember upsetting someone who was um, displaying one of their systems when I asked, he said, Well, put whatever cargo you want. So I said, off-market cargo, and he just looked at me. And I said, well, actually, there's an awful lot of importance in relationships which you're never, ever going to see on the screen. And I think that will always be true. I think in terms of technology, well, brokers will make use of it, and the bigger brokers will offer their clients all sorts of services which will inevitably be giving access to them directly. In 2000, people were looking at coming to us and saying, can we insure a shipbroker if he's sitting in the client's office? So if he's in the charterer's office, does that matter to you? Um, the answer is quite large, no. But I think you will see a change with technology. I think you'll see um, communication with clients and the information flow of clients change. But fundamentally, I think information without analysis is only half the story. And what brokers do is give you analysis. And I don't see principles wanting to do away with that. Just two, two small points. Number one, who do the principles blame when it goes wrong? <laughs> Us. <laughs> the second point, we talked about transparency. Well, with respect to owners and with respect to charters, they are not transparent on their information. We hear regularly a charter, oh, I fixed that ship at that rate. The same fixture the owners fix higher. It's us as the broker who will tell other owners the truth. Because it's only if we've done the fixture will we tell them. But there's an awful lot of incorrect information, and I think that is as much created by the principles as by the brokers. Yeah, this, this I think is very, very true. This is one, one of the main points. And how, how is the uh, Open sea working from that point of view. Which kind of information are you are you giving to your principals? We are giving new features uh, because all our positions which are open, uh, you can't. Uh, find who is the owner, if it is a broker or ship owner, and you don't know the name of the charter. For example, if the charter plays his position and he knows he's sure that there will be no signs of his company, he can place the cargo with the freight idea. So it uh, allows to compete with other charters and ship owners can just look and choose the best freight idea and to call that particular charter first. It will save time. I understand. But basically, uh, I'm just working on, on the 
as you said before, advertising. It's true. I, I follow you when, when you know that you touch a button or you look on your screen. By the description of it, it seems that uh, it's like it's just like a game. This is a you open your screen, you are the Shikona, go there, these are the cargoes and so on. So in theory, and I must say, when the internet came, I, as a Shikona, thought that our end was very, very close. Because I exactly thought to what you are doing, i.e. Somebody will put the cargoes, somebody will put the ships, there will be uh, a system, there will be a, a, a computer which will just match things together. So why are we still here? But as an example, in terms of um, reliability, how do you measure, how do you grade shipping? Because one of the things today we were discussing earlier, one of the main issues that the ship owner nowadays have is if I fix with this charter, will he pay the freight? Probably yes, because he wants to have the car. This, but will he pay the new register? How can I be safe from that? Yeah, if I am the charter, yeah. I won't pay you the bridge mm -hmm. in this charge point. So what will you do? You are ship owner. Yeah, but, but would you make the uh, black circulation? Mm -hmm. what? Well, what is what is usual uh, reply for such situation? Well, a, a broker a broker will always will always uh, first of all check on mm -hmm. yeah, both the two sides. Not a broker because broker is the media. Mm -hmm. um, he won't. He will try his best to fix the situation and minimize. Okay. But uh, the other side, who believes that uh, he suffered mm -hmm. for it, uh, as I said, that's mm -hmm. So he is upset. Yes. What he can do? Yeah, but my, he's my, facing my, such situation. Yes, but my question is, when when I when I am the shipowner and <coughs> I decide to go on the cargo. And I'm doing that through open sea. How can I be sure that if there will be the new agent that is charging for the charter that we pay? Because uh, we are given another opportunity to give a feedback after every voyage. So both sides so both sides are given, are given a feedback. feedback. I understand. <laughs> I, well, <coughs> from, from this point of view, you, Jan, uh, which is the kind of feed, feedback you, you give to a charter coming to you or to a ship owner before offering him a cargo? So you say you just pass the cargo, that's it, and these are the charters? Or is it common to give a bit of feedback about who are the charters, who are, which are the regular trades? How, how you Proceed normally. Usually, uh, it's not about feedback after. I think a broker. Yes, before, no, I mean before. I mean before. Before, after, and dur during, yeah. which is quite important. Yeah. So, for instance, we, my company is dealing with both charter as well as sell and purchase. So we have both sides. And in general, what I try to do is to give as much background as I can. It's not about to my uh, my principles. Um, as well, we are talking before, but we are talking during. Uh, one of the key important things about a uh, human broker, the social platform, I think, is about problem solving, as you said, basically. Which I think leaving a feedback before, dealing with, uh, you know, like you leave a message, uh, or I don't know what interaction you have, actually. I can't really see how you can address uh, a problem directly. I, I just can't see it. So, on the shelter side, usually I, I give as much information I was talking about uh, technical, mm -hmm. trying to understand the requirements as much as I can, and not like, uh, you know, like, and guide sometimes my charters to I, towards the right solution, mm -hmm. which is not like uh, one, you know, like click on something uh, to get small yes. or anything like that. So it's probably uh, talking to my, uh, to my principals, try to understand exactly what they need and address that. And any problems, address it. 
and during the, the charter as well, after the charter as well, and then you have uh, other business. Well, in technology, you are limited by the fact that you have uh, options. Well, it's your opinion. <laughs> yes, of course, it's a matter of opinion, but we are interested because, as we said, we want to understand how how we can make use of also technology. Because we are using technology every day, mainly for communication, unfortunately. But for sure we can use technology a lot more. The problem is that, you see, we all think that human contact is still, I would say, the main factor. This is what we, this is what we feel, not only because we want to convince ourselves that we are needed or that we will survive. But because this is the feedback we get from our charter, from our principal, basically. And what puzzles me is uh, which kind of feedback, which, ki which kind of principal are looking for you to, to, to use for a system like that. Who is the, let's say, is the principal who has no time? Is the is the owner who is who is understaffed? So he has a very small office. He wants to limit to the minimum, and then just go 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 go. Or which kind of customer you normally have? It, but it's interesting for us again not to fight, but just to see which kind of use, which kind of uh, call it cooperation event could be possible. Because I'm convinced. When when uh, when a uh, lot of things in technology came in, as you said, fax. Ah, we have a fax now. And <clears throat> on the beginning, ma many things appears to be useless or too expensive or I'll never use. Ah, uh, well, I, I often say that the first time I was on a car with an automatic uh, with an automatic gear, I said, well, I'm used to. to to, to have a handle, and I love to drive my car with with my normal uh, gear because I love the manual one. Now every time I have to drive a car on manual, I'm in trouble because it's so wonderful to let the car think for me. And so what what I'm thinking is, I'm positive to believe there must be advantage, but I'm just trying to to see which 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 are. Which is the kind of? I can say that uh, our most active users are brokers, and uh, more than half of our users are brokers. So, <laughs> is it <an> <laughs> This is scary. <laughs> if I must say, what is scary? No, I'm joking. <laughs> I, I, say, I, say, I, I heard you say that you, were, you thought this was more geared to the bulk market. On some of the wet markets in particular, and I'm talking here uh, fuel oil, I'm talking LNG, there's an awful lot of trading cargoes, and so the charterer is trying to buy the cargo and he needs a ship to cover his purchase should he have it. Now, all that business is off market because the charterer does not want to disclose to the other charterers who are trying to buy the same cargo what he's doing and to secure the transportation. So, as I said, I, I, I can understand much more the need on the dry side, but on a lot of the wet side, I, I think the charterer would be very reluctant to uh, expose himself because he is competing with other people for the cargoes and needs the tonnage. And Cole's probably got more experience from an owning side when you've seen it, right? <coughs> The number of times uh, I, I was the charging manager for a large uh, ship owning company for many years, and um, the number of times we stood behind charters where they were trying to uh, sell cargoes um, weekly, uh, probably more than, than we fixed on the spot market. So I can uh, I can understand where, where Alan's coming from and agree with him. Now I, I, I run one ship. Um, and it's a relationship, you know, it's, it's, it's a relationship with, I, I rely on brothers more now than I did before. There's, there's, um, there is a need 
for technology. I, I totally agree with that. I mean, it should be integrated. It should be a, a, more of a, a tool rather than replacing the dodos. But do you describe yourself as a marketplace or as a tool? No, we are sheep chapter and marketplace. Sorry? Yeah. We are sheep chapter and marketplace. Marketplace. Open for sheep brokers, for chatters, for sheep owners. Oh, this, is, this is interesting. I must say that I, I never see... It's interesting when you say that most of your customers are sheep brokers. Because then, then the question is, what are the programs there for? Okay. But if marketplace if I may ask, why, why is she broken? You should be using your... I think that is why ship brokers are more actively on the market. Because they are doing daily transactions, they need more information, they need to find any new opportunities, because the ship brokers are more than charters to ship owners on the market. So this is very competitive business. That is why they are searching. That is why they are eager to find any new tools to try it and to find uh, out if uh, there is some value in it. Uh, the question is, are ship owners confident in a system like that? Where, did you say, is your system more used by charters? Your ideal usual customers are charters? Or owners. Oh. Ideal. So ideal. Ideal. Are usual. More. Let's say your marketplace is. I think the balance will be like in real life because it is already something. I mean, if uh, there is 50 percent of the ship brokers, the other about 25, and ship owners almost the uh, same. I see. But in, in any case, you say that most of the of the of the users are ship brokers. Yes, and they are most active. I mean, they are placing their position. And uh, I can say, in terms of uh, is there any value for ship owners? The first man who came to us and uh, offered funds was a ship owner of dry bulk carriers. This is, this is interesting. It's not the only. What, what I can't get through my head is if you're going to charge 1% or 1 and a quarter percent, and you're not representing either the owner or the charter, why would anybody pay you for you to be another channel between a broker representing one side of the principal and the broker working the other principal? As, as Colm said, as an owner, we really only want to do it with a broker who's working both the, char the charter and the principal. I can give you a simple situation. When uh, I'm a charter or a broker, when I have open position and no broker already offered me another one, I am ready for any other opportunities. And I am searching as a ship charter manager, not the main ship owner. He just don't know what the process is. But the ship charter manager, his assistant file. 